As mentioned previously, Portugal created a trade-based empire to Southern Africa and Asia. While Europeans hoped to colonize there as they had in the Americas, they encountered large land-based empires in India and China. The Americas had been depopulated due to diseases and the natives were easier to subdue. However, in Asia, they had been subjected to the same diseases over time and thus the populations of India and China and elsewhere were immune. Thus, Europe could only develop sustaining colonies in less populated areas. Portugal would take over for the Arabs in Asian trade. So the Portuguese established trading networks that had already been in place between the Arabs and India, China, and East Asia. On the map at the start is the Strait of Malacca. It's a very geostrategic area because if you are going from point A to point B, let's say from India to China, that is the shortest route. Follow this. If you go from India to China, you're going to go through that area that has the star, the Straits of Malacca, and then you can make a quick turn and go up to China. However, if you were to sail around outside of what is present-day Indonesia, you are going to have to travel several thousand more miles to circumnavigate those areas. So the Arabs were conquered by the Portuguese. They would establish these bases along the Strait of Malacca. Eventually, the, the Dutch would destroy these areas. So to have control of this narrow area known as the Strait of Malacca was key to having control of the spice trade. Over time, the Protestant, English, and Dutch took over much of the spice trade to Europe. Explorations were risky and expensive. While one could reap huge rewards, they could also face bankruptcy via storms or pirate attacks. Therefore, joint stock companies were created to share risk and secure stable profits for the investor. The Dutch East India Company was created in 1602, and they used force and diplomacy to begin a trading network. Again, the idea of a stock company is rather than one person financing this whole affair, which a, you could reap major rewards, but if a hurricane came along and decimated all the ships in the area, you would take a massive loss. So the idea is to spread the risk through a joint stock company. The money that is going to be created as profit will go towards dividends, but much of the money will be reinvested in the company. Perhaps they will buy more farmland and they will put more areas under produce and so forth. This gave a monopoly on Dutch trade with Asia. The Dutch East Company alone was allowed to trade for these spices. So therefore, if you have a monopoly, you know that you are guaranteed to make a, a profit for this. The East Indy Company also had a military of its own to withstand attacks by the Portuguese, by the Arabs. These joint stock companies would become a model for other European countries on how to use chartered companies. The Dutch also had more advanced ship designs and construction. They would seize the Straits of Malacca from the Portuguese in 1641. So they would then control the spices. They also seized the island of Sri Lanka in 1658, which is off the southeastern tip of today's India. And they also created the port of Cape Town in 1652 in South Africa. This port on the South African coast was generally for resupply, to help resupply Dutch ships. It would be the halfway point between going to India and back to the Netherlands.